this is Reading the Word with Luther for August 5th. I'm going to read to you from Genesis chapter 8, verses 20 to the end of the chapter, verse 22. I'm reading in the Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible. Then Noah built an ark to the Lord, and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither again will I destroy every living creature as I have done, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. This is the word of God. This is what Luther wrote about that 21st verse, the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. This is a powerful passage relating to original sin. Whoever weakens its force goes groping like the blind man in the sunlight, failing to see his own acts and experiences. Look at how many ways sin manifests itself in our earlier years. What an amount of switching it requires until we are taught order and attention to duty. What then shall we say of the inward vices when unbelief, presumption, neglect of the word, and wicked views grow up? Original sin is not a slight disorder or infirmity, but complete lawlessness, the like of which is not found in other creatures except in evil spirits. Not even the saints are accepted, for we learn by experience that even holy men can scarcely stand firm, that even they are often entangled by gross sins, being overwhelmed by such natural corruptions. The Hebrew Neurim denotes the age when man begins to use his reason, this naturally occurs in the sixth year. Similarly, the term na'aram is used to note boys and youths who need the guidance of parents and teachers up to the age of manhood. It will be profitable for each of us to glance backward to that period of life and consider how willingly we obeyed the commands of our parents and teachers, how diligent we were in studying, how persevering we were, how often our parents punished our sauciness. Who can say for himself that he was not much more pleased to go out for a walk, to play games, and to gossip, than to go to church in obedience to his parents? Although these impulses can be corrected or bridled to a certain extent by discipline, they cannot be entirely rooted out of the heart, as their traces show when we are grown up. God, indeed, causes some persons to experience emotions which are naturally good, but they are induced by supernatural power. Thus Cyrus was impelled to restore the worship of God and to preserve the church. But such is not the tendency of human nature. Where God is present with his Holy Spirit, there only the imagination of the human heart gives place to the thoughts of God. God dwells there through the Word and the Spirit. But Moses speaks here only of those who are without the Holy Spirit. They are wicked even at their best. Well, you're probably left thinking, as I am, that if um, this uh, natural tendency of the heart is to be overcome, we need to um, stop neglecting the Word. We need to have it way more uh, prevalent, a force, in our lives. We need to be reading it and listening to it and, and, and seeing it and, um, just all the time. But the tendency these days is to uh, watch another rerun, watch YouTube. <clears throat> we do neglect the Word, no matter how much we think we avail ourselves of the Word. We do neglect it, and it shows. So, with that thought in mind, let's pray for a minute. Holy God, help us to hunger for your word. Help us to turn to it often, more often than we do. So that some of this natural tendency of original sin, the imaginations of the heart, may be disciplined, may be um, switched out of us by the word. 
bring the switch of your word to bear in our lives so that we not might not be uh, so much ruled by this natural tendency to sin. We ask it for Christ's sake and in his name. Amen. Well, with that, I just hope that you'll join me again tomorrow for reading the word with Luther.